So let's get to the root of the problem. You said that you, you see two kinds of bullying, two types of bullying that we have right. in these? If somebody's good, somebody's not going to like them. And that breaks down into what a lot of people call smack talk. You hear this all the time. It just becomes an escalation of insults. But there's another type. If somebody is different in the group, and unfortunately, girls play these games, but there are not very many of them. So if you get a single girl in the room, she's just about wearing a hat that says, hey, jump on me. You know, that's, so there's two different kinds of this. And it really comes down to, to a minority issue. Even though everybody, essentially on, in, online, is the same. Everybody's an avatar or digital or right, the right. bottom line is the voice behind it or the profile can, behind it. The voice, it. sometimes, you know, you'll have one person that has a really bad southern drawl. Say somebody from really deep south Louisiana that has a, a really major Cajun accent. That makes them different and so you can just expect trouble. Now, what causes it? That's usually the common question, right? I've been involved with all sorts of things over the years. Scouts, you know, if you took a, a group of 12 Cub Scouts and took them to a, a, a private movie, and right in the middle of the movie, the lights go out, there could be some interesting things that are gonna happen there. If there's one person that they don't like, you can bet that person's gonna get pelted with ice or popcorn or whatever, right? Why? Because A, they don't like that person, and B, they're anonymous when it's in the dark. And I think it's that an anonymous aspect that makes the game servers, you know, so rowdy as they are now. Because people think they can say anything. You know, they know if you walked into a room of adults and you said some of these things, somebody would just pop you upside the head, it'd be over. But remote like that, nobody knows who you are. You can claim to be things that you're not, but you can jump on people f with basic impunity. That's, that's a problem. When it comes to, to that, one of the things that a couple of the women that I spoke to, and I was doing Skype interviews with, um, what is it, fatuglyorslutty.com is the website, I believe it is. Hmm. And uh, basically, these are some female gamers that were friendly, and I guess they met online, that kind of thing, and they started sharing their experiences, and then they started doing screen grabs of the messages and recording the conversations and stuff like that, and they're sure. sharing this all in one place. And that's what caught the New York Times attention, I believe. When they start looking at it, they're like, wow, you know, this is, this is relentless. Um, when you see that aspect of, of attack by gender, for an industry that's growing the way online gaming is, it, you would think that the, the companies that are putting out the video games would want to continue to expand that base and the female gamer would be a good place to expand to. Sure. Do you feel that they feel obligated to try and curb some of this at some point, or do they not pay that much attention? How does it get moderated? Again, you know, if you say, say you have a movie theater <clears throat> and you have people that are getting picked on by people throwing objects at them and stuff, you can address that by having people out in the audience watching, right? I mean, you know, a lot of movie theaters have that on Saturday mornings when the kids come out. But I don't know how you do it online. You can, you can shut them off where they can't play anymore. That might be a solution. But you also have that reverse discrimination approach where a, a group of people can gang up on somebody and says, hey, this person was acting like a jerk. They were cursing, calling people names, and, it, and they may have not done a thing at all. So, you know, the, the, that kind of a process is a tough one to deal with. I don't know how you deal with it automated. I mean, I suppose you could, you know, put force recognition if they were willing to pay for the hardware on the, the server in and catch those kinds of words. I mean, they do that on some of the websites, you know, message boards. There are words that you can't use. They're replaced by asterisk or whatever. So people also find real inventive ways to get around that. Yeah. So, I mean, even that's hard to, to deal with. I don't know. Does the anonymity give more power to, I guess, even older gamers to, to behave in a way that they would never imagine doing in, in real life? I'm 64. I see this, you know, we have a group, and you probably can't put this on the air, but we have a group that we've been playing for a long time. We commonly laugh and refer to ourselves as the old farts club. Okay. Like, you know, five or six of us that are all in our 60s. We don't talk like that, but there will somebody will come in the room and somebody will mention, well, Bob's the oldest person here. I'll instantly become a target. Just to, you know, not necessarily just young kids, but older guys. So it's, I don't know if this is really, I don't know why, I don't do it. I, you know, you may not be inclined to do it. I'm not inclined to try to insult people. I'm there to try to have a good time, you know, play online with my kids, with friends, and 
enjoy the experience. But there are some that seem to have more interest in creating gigantic arguments and having everybody yelling and screaming at the end of a game as opposed to enjoying playing the game. Why they do that, I don't know. How you get rid of them, I don't know. Uh, the thing is, is that Xbox Live, that's a pay service, right? You, right. you pay to get into that. So right. as a consumer, uh, paying for that, you you should certainly feel that you have some kind of rights to, to, to protect yourself and enjoy your gaming experience. As a parent with a child, um, you know, I don't know how many parents sit down and, and listen to these conversations. I guess they got the headphones on, that kind of thing. Right. Um, I, have, I guess I have two different questions here. My first question is, is that I guess as a parent, is it important that that you have your child plug in some speakers so you can hear what they're engaging in, or is this something you discuss with a child before they go on, or do you put an age limit before they're allowed to go in? Well, my son and I have been playing for a long time now, and when he was younger. I just simply had a couple of discussions with him about the problem and says, look, you know, there's no point in getting into arguments online. It's not going to go anywhere. It's not going to solve anything. And chances are it will just get more and more intense. Nothing's going to come out of it. And he kind of picked up on that. I don't think you can expect to listen in because there's another side of that story you may not be aware of. Let me pause this. So there's another side of this story that you might not think about. There's some young kids that come on and they talk worse than the adults do because their mom and dad can't see them. And you know that will get, that will get it going just as quickly. So there's two sides to that. And I think it's a matter of, I don't think you're ever gonna make a clean environment. How can you take somebody to a football game? Which I used to take my family to and guarantee that you're not gonna find drunks that are doing obscene things or saying obscene things. You, you can't protect against that. I mean, they can't keep the drunks out because they, they're not drunk when they go in, apparently. So I think it's more you have to educate your kids on what, you, what they're going to see and don't take it personal. And don't get involved in it, for heaven's sake. When you do find yourself becoming the target, as a lot of these young women are, um, yeah, they're there to have a good time as well. But is it right that, they're, that their only defense really is just to log off? Well. You know, in, in the games that I play, I, I'm a first-person shooter type. You know, you've probably heard of all the Call, Call of Duty series, which is the main main game I play nowadays. We have, you know, a, a group. You know, there, there may be a million people online playing, but they they lump you into groups of twelve. Call that a lobby. I, when I or some of us get into a lobby where that's going on, we just leave and go to another lobby, and you can you can simply avoid it. Now there are times when the game is, you know, there's just the right congestion where you keep getting back every time you quit and rejoin, you go back to the same lobby there and you're stuck there. And I'll either ignore it, I've sometimes turned my headset off. Now, I hate to do it because, you know, we're playing as a team and you need to communicate. But we don't have that, you know, once, you, once the game gets started, the other team, you don't hear their audio. So you get, you know, kind of immune to that crowd. It's just between the games where there's a pause where everybody's in the lobby and they can do this trash talking. And you know, a lot of us do a lot of trash talking about, you know, we, we really trapped you guys that time and that sort of stuff. Right. But it's not where it's continual cursing and insulting. Where do you see online go gaming going? Uh, it seems like, and yeah, I'm not really a gamer. I, I have a PlayStation 3, but I've never actually gone online and, and tried to play somebody. So for me- It's interesting. Yeah. Uh, what has happened, number one, the graphics have become phenomenal, where you can almost immerse yourself in the experience. Now, you know, these games work with 3D, so you can even get the 3D effect if you use a 3D TV. The audio is good, the sound effects are good. Things look so realistic that it's really fun to get into these because you can do things you've always you've wanted to be a Navy SEAL. You can be a Navy SEAL without joining the military, without doing all the training, and, and see what the experience is like. It's gotten better and better. There's always going to be the downside. I, I think you know, there's no perfect thing that er has ever been done. And there's a small group that always wants to, if I can't enjoy it, I'm gonna try to ruin it for everybody else. You know, I saw that when I was in high school, elementary school, and it still goes today. And it, I said, it's not just the kids, it's adults as well. What's the appeal from playing just on your own at home and then dialing into a network and, and playing with other people? What would well, number one, you know, my daughter is 30, 36, 39, I guess she is, coming up with 40. 
she lives across town. She gets on every night and, and, and she plays with us. I get to spend some time with her, you know, a couple of hours that I would not get to otherwise. So I enjoy that because we can talk about other things as well as play the game. I've met a lot of people on the, online that are fun to talk to, they're fun to play with. You know, it's fun to work out the strategy, Call of Duty in particular. You've got six people trying to beat six other people. It's not just run around and pull the trigger. You know, there's strategy, there's obstacles, there's you know, points to control. So you get to talk and work out plans, test your mind a little bit, keep your mind active, which you know, 64 I think is an important thing. I think that's the attractiveness is you meet people. You may once or twice every now and then actually meet them physically because you know you discover we've I've discovered a couple of my online friends are local. We'll get together. So that's a different way of, of getting in expanding your, yeah. your social base, I guess. Right. You know other equivalents I, when I was young I played chess. There are chess tournaments. You go to chess tournaments, there's fifty or hundred or two hundred people. Nowadays they're doing the same thing online. So you don't have to travel. You just log on to a chess server. You can play a game anytime you want. They still have tournaments, but you get to play from your home. You get the same effect. You can talk to the people if you wish, et cetera. So, I mean, it's, it's just an extension of things we've done all along. It's just the internet cuts out the travel and makes it easier because there's no expense. There's no time involved other than the time you spent playing the game. You're not driving to Huntsville to a chess tournament or driving to Mobile as I've done in years gone by. So in your mind, this is just going to continue to get bigger. It's I not, think so. This isn't going to, to, to Call of Duty has 15 million online players. Big number. Game sales for 60 bucks. 15 million times 60. They have updates throughout the year to give us new maps. That's another 60 bucks. That's one game. And not everybody plays Call of Duty online. It's a good single player game just sitting in front of your Xbox or PlayStation and playing by yourself like we used to play video games for years. So the 15 million registered online people, that's big money. And that's a lot of people. And I play against people from Germany, in England, France, Australia. You're talking to people that you would never have spoken yeah. to ever, never had all, to. All over the world. Sometimes it's a problem. There's a language barrier. We get some group from Mexico. I don't speak Spanish. But you know, most of them can speak some English, and we have a good time playing. So it gives you a chance to meet people you never meet, although you're not really meeting them, and you don't get to really get to know them very well, other than what they show you over the over the game console. But it's a lot of fun, and it's it's getting bigger, and it's one of these that's probably in an exponential growth stage right now. Because ten years ago, this wasn't very big. Do you anticipate as this thing grows that, that more females are going to get involved? They are going to start I know a fair number of females that play. You know, I, when I say I play with females, I don't like that term because it doesn't sound right. But my daughter plays. There's some other girls that play that I have known for years, you know, not via online, that are really good players. They're, 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 they're technically sharp. I mean, you can talk to them about computers or what's my interest. And some of them are really good at that. So the women are involved, but they're not nearly as much into the shoot 'em up stuff as the guys are. So they're going to be a minority, and I believe they're always going to be a you know, PhD in computer science. Uh, a couple of years ago we were trying to hire, and there was one PhD in the entire country awarded that year to a female.